Mansion House is a busy station on the district and circle lines of the London Underground. It's in the City of London proper, the financial district. It sees frequent services to stations like Victoria, King's Cross, St Pancras, Richmond, Barking, Wimbledon and many other important destinations. Why then does such an important station have an abandoned platform? Mansion House was opened in 1871 by the District Railway. The District Railway is these days the District Line, and it's that sort of obscure information that keeps people coming back to this channel. The District Line was founded as a sort of spin-off from the Metropolitan Railway in order to form a circular route around the city and the West End of London, a sort of circle line, if you will. This was envisioned as a fairly quick process. After all, the Metropolitan Railway had only taken about three years to build, and an underground railway was a new concept back then. As it turned out, progress on the circle was painfully slow, mostly due to the lack of funding, but also because the district kept getting distracted by other projects. In 1868, the first section opened, from South Kensington to Westminster Bridge. It took two more years to get to Blackfriars, and in 1871, Mansion House was reached. The station was officially opened by the Prime Minister, William Gladstone, who also owned shares in the company. Mansion House is in some ways curiously named. The Mansion House is the official residence of the Lord Mayor of London. There's an underground entrance next to it. An entrance to Bank Station. In fact, Cannon Street, Monument and Bank are all closer to the Mansion House than Mansion House is. The fact that the station is called Mansion House is kind of a reflection of the district's failure to get their line built. Cannon Street, the next station to the east, wasn't built until 1884. In fact, progress on the line was so slow that permission to extend east had already lapsed by the time Mansion House was built, meaning more delays. Long story short, when Mansion House was built, it was the closest station to Mansion House for 13 years. In real terms, it's not that far from the Mansion House. You could walk it in a few minutes. I can certainly think of more deceptively named stations in London looking at you, Latimer Road. While they didn't have their circle line, Mansion House did give them a station in the financial district, which most railway companies did not have. And this is where we get into those other projects I mentioned earlier. The district became very interested in expanding into the western suburbs, either using their own or other companies' track. They started pushing towards places like Hammersmith, Uxbridge, Wimbledon, Ealing, Windsor, Putney and Richmond. Growing towns full of the sort of people who could really use a train direct to the city. The line wasn't just built for the district and metropolitan railways, but the hope was that other railway companies would send trains over it as well. And why not? So, Mansion House was built with a little extra capacity. The North London Railway, the London and North Western Railway, and the Great Western Railway all ran trains terminating here. In fact, while today we talk about the Circle Line, when it was first completed, that line was known as the Inner Circle. The Great Western Railway ran the Middle Circle, and the London and North Western Railway ran the Outer Circle, both calling it Mansion House. I did some videos on those routes, but they weren't very good, and I keep thinking I should remake them. Now, you would think that a station in the financial district would be a license to print money, so to speak. But oddly enough, Mansion House wasn't that successful. Relatively speaking. I mean, it did okay, but given how much the line had cost to build, it had to be really popular to justify itself. As the 19th century moved into the 20th century, other tube lines started muscling in on the area. Faster, more modern ones driven by electricity instead of steam. Then there were buses and trams, which offered cheap fares. Despite this, though, the line was getting rather congested. How could they make more money if they couldn't run any more trains? One idea the district had to drum up business was to build a new electric line, an express from Mansion House to Earl's Court with a single intermediate stop at Charing Cross. Permission was obtained to build this in 1897, but the scheme was abandoned because there was someone who reckoned he had a better idea. In 1901, Charles Tyson Yerkes effectively bought the district railway out and made plans to electrify it. 
These plans were brought to fruition in 1905. Electric trains can accelerate and decelerate faster than steam engines. So that meant a lot of time could be saved and more frequent services could be run. Mansion House was kind of a mess up until this point. There were two extra lines where trains could terminate, known in railway terms as bays. Plus there were several sets of points needed to enable locomotives to be uncoupled from their trains and to run around. Shunting moves meant that the through lines to the east were often blocked. In 1908, the steam-hauled London and North Western Railway services to Mansion House ended, and so the opportunity was taken to rebuild the station. Electric trains, of course, don't need shunting in order to reverse. And now all the trains using Mansion House were electric. The central platform was widened, the bays were retained, but they were moved. Sometimes it's very useful to have a place where you can terminate a train, in the railway scheduling sense, not the Arnold Schwarzenegger sense. In the case of the district line, it meant that more trains could be run over the busy central section without having to send them all the way to Upminster, where trains are less busy. It would have been more convenient to reverse trains slightly further east outside the city, but the other stations on the line didn't have the space. It was cheaper to use the extra space at Mansion House and just put up with the inconvenience. In 1926, the station received a new Charles Holden-style façade. This was one of his early works for the underground and was in a similar style to the ones on the Northern Line extension to Morden. Unfortunately, this entrance would be knocked down in the 80s and replaced with a new, not particularly interesting entrance in 1991. But we are skipping ahead. Even with the rebuild at Mansion House and the increase in services, the district remained congested. Mansion House was situated on the busiest part of the line, so terminating trains solved one problem but caused another. Once again, they got in the way of through trains when they reversed. Back then, the service was more intensive than it even is today. One of the aims of the Victoria Line was to relieve pressure on the Circle Line by cutting across it, but at the same time as that was being built, another scheme was being brought into effect. In 1967, a new station was built to the east, Tower Hill. There was already a station serving Tower Hill. It was here, and had been opened under the name of Mark Lane. But by the 1960s, it was hopelessly inadequate. It was decided to close it and start again. The new station was slightly closer to the Tower of London, and was much larger. It was equipped with a bay platform, much like the one at Mansion House. But the big advantage it had over Mansion House was that it was three stops to the east on the edge of the city. This made a massive difference. It meant that all trains crossing the city crossed the whole of the city, and no longer did reversing trains have to shuffle in embarrassment across the line of oncoming trains. This meant that Mansion House didn't really need its bays anymore. One was removed in 1968, and the other one was retained, just in case. But in 2016, this too was removed. The hydraulic buffer stop is still in place, but the track is gone, leaving a curious void in the middle of the station. So if you're still with me, that is why there is an abandoned platform in the middle of Mansion House Station. An awful lot of the underground was built piecemeal on an as-and-when basis, and that meant that compromises of the past wound up affecting operations later on. Mansion House is just such a compromise. An accidental city terminus, not situated in the best location, kept an extra platform because they had to put it somewhere. I actually quite like that odd little space and pointless buffer stop. It's a reminder of how complicated the history of the underground actually is. Good evening, I hope you enjoyed this trackless tale from the tube. If you did, please do leave a like and consider subscribing for more content on the underground and related topics. And sometimes topics that aren't related at all, I don't stand on ceremony here. Thanks as ever to my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon, you are the terminating service to my bay platform. And I'll see you all again very soon for another tale from the tube.